everybody, we're going to go over some of the new features of the global map browser. So to get to the new browser, you're going to first log into near map. It's going to take you to the classic browser. You're going to have to go into your account here at the top right and go to new map browser. It's going to open up a new instance and it's going to be at the same location that you left off at. So some of the new features that are in the, the new map browser are we have an autocomplete function for our search. So you can start typing in an address and it's going to automatically try to find that address and complete it for you. Uh, you can also rotate the screen. You can do that by holding down the Alt button on a Windows keyboard and clicking and holding and moving the screen around. And to get back to North View, you can just click on the compass. It's going to take you right back to where you were. Some of the other new features are uh, when we draw lines, you have the ability to click anywhere on that line and add a new vertice. So you can reshape this. It's kind of limitless. So you can add as many vertices as you need to reshape that line. You can do the same thing with area. You can zoom into an area and then we can move this Around, match the building. And you can also change the units of measurement, turn labels on and off. The same options for measuring radius. Just click once and then move your mouse. Click again to finish. And you can move the entire circle by clicking in the middle, panning it around. And click on the edges and change the size of it. We also have the ability to add annotation now, so you can click text, click somewhere, give it a name. If you hit enter, it's going to take you to the next line of text. Then you can just click off somewhere and it's going to save that. Then you can move this around with the dot that's underneath it. Move it right there. And then we have the ability to export this image. So when we do export, if we choose screenshot, we have the ability to include map objects. So everything that we put up on the screen is going to come through on this screenshot. We don't have the ability to export a geo-referenced image with the annotations or the measurements though. But we do have the ability to export high resolution images. So you can select the bounding box select the resolution this would be three inch it's going to tell you some good information about how big that image is and how much file size it takes up this would not be a geo-referenced image for a geo-referenced image we actually have to select geo-referenced image and then you get to select your area select your projection again we always recommend if the customer is using state plane and they download it in nat 83 in their utm zone and they can reproject it into state plane much easier. So it's pretty much the same process for exporting images. And we can go in and delete some of these items that we drew. You just click on them and then use the trash can icon. Okay, so some of the other features of the new map browser, we still have the ability for split view and we can do that with panorama as well. So this is Las Vegas where we have two panorama captures. Change the date and you still have the ability to use the slider tool even on panoramic imagery. So the key about panorama is this is a stitched mosaic image. This is taken from many different source oblique photos and stitched together. So it's a, a seamless experience where you can pan and zoom and move around quite easily. This gives you a lot of options on you know, viewing a large area in panorama. You can also change the direction, the imagery, by using the wheel down here. 
It's important to note that this panorama imagery is geo-referenced, but it's not measurable. And you can't export this as a geo-referenced image. You can only export this as a screenshot. But you can include map objects when you do a screenshot of the panorama imagery. So to view oblique imagery, what you can do is right click and you'll have the ability to drop a pin. When you drop a pin, you have this option to view oblique photos. Also when you right click, you can turn on roads overlay and you can save map. So what that's going to do is essentially just a screenshot of the area that you're in right now. You can right click again by turning and turn off roads overlay and see the image that we saved it was just a screenshot of that session with the pin drop. So to view the oblique photos, you kind of pick the area that you want to look at. So we'll look at this building here. So we'll drop the pin there and we'll view oblique photos. It's also going to give you photo time as well, address and lat long information. So now we'll view the obliques. You can change this from north, south, east, west, all the different cardinal directions, and that pin will stay in place so you know exactly what you're looking at, which can be very beneficial when you're in very dense urban areas. You can lose track of what building it was you were trying to look at. So to get out of this, we can just go back to either vertical or panorama. So if you have a customer that's looking at this building, and when they're in vertical view, they notice that there's some structures here and they want to see what they are. So when we view panorama we can't see them because it's blocked by the building. So what we'll do is we'll go on that pin and we'll view oblique photos. So it's also obscured in this oblique photo. But we can change the image so we get a different look angle so we can see better what's down there. This is still kind of obscured so we'll go to the next image. Now we can really see what these structures are. They look like transformers. So it's one of the great things about how we collect our imagery is we get multiple different look angles for each spot on the ground. So we can kind of maneuver around objects that are blocking our view. And when you're in this view, you can do measurements such as height. So we can zoom in close on this and measure the height of that object. And that's going to be accurate to within six inches if you, you know, take your time and click on the right spots. So you can zoom in really close and find where the ledge of that building is and we can start measuring from that ledge. Now this is going to lock to vertical in reference to the orientation of the image. So because this image is tilted like this doesn't mean that this direction is up and down and knows what vertical it is. So it's going to lock to vertical on that building. You can go in right to the ledge and that measurement is going to be accurate to within six inches. You can also measure the width of objects while you're in oblique. So you can select a spot. This doesn't lock into any orientation. Then you can continue to pan and zoom while you're measuring so you can get more precise measurements. If there was a little ledge here or a slope, we could grab that line and move it up to match the slope of the roof. You also have the ability to turn labels on and off, change your units of measurement. We can add annotation. And we can move that annotation around and we can export this image as a screenshot that includes map objects. You'll see that we can't do a high resolution image or a geo-referenced image. The imagery that's shown in the oblique photos is three inch resolution imagery. It's the source imagery from the aircraft. That's why the orientation is like this. So we use the external orientation and internal orientation parameters of the aircraft and the camera 
to geo-reference this imagery, scale it, and make it measurable. So to get out of the oblique here, we can use this out, we can either change back to panorama or go straight to vertical. When you're back in oblique again, you still have the options to change your view. So if we were measuring those items and we wanted to look at them from the side, now they're obscured by trees, so we can change to the west view and we can measure the depth of those transformers now. And then we can save all these with an export and annotations. If you use that in a presentation or just for general planning, analysis, whatever the customer needs. And that's all there is to the new map browser.